everybody, welcome back to the channel. We have my dad here again, Hi. as per request. And today it's not going to be just about prog, it's going to be live albums. So I've been hyping up the viewers for another video. I've not said anything about today's video until right now. So we're going to be talking about live albums. Great. Are you alright with that? That's fabulous. Thanks very much. Let's start. What's your opinion on live albums? Well, um... Because a lot of people don't really like live albums, but then there's people that obviously, because we're in lockdown, there's no concerts, so uh, look, there's a school of opinion that's like, well, you know, it's like taking a concert home, but a lot of people don't like live albums, so what's your opinion? Um, I like live albums because it really gives, generates the electricity between the musicians and the, the audience, and although you can never capture a, a live gig without being there, there are live albums, which we'll be discussing later, that uh, have that energy. And when you listen to some tracks which you know on a studio album, they're being played live in an extended version. Mm. Sometimes they're even better than the studio version. That's a good point. But so I'm just going to pull them out around the 13 here, by the way. Right. Unlucky number. <laughs> but I'm just going to pick a random one. So Yeah, lovely. For you to talk about, got Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix Band of Gypsies. Made towards the end of his uh, tragic life. This was made after the ex experience had broken up and was recorded in New York at the famous, I think, believe it or not, Fillmore East. Um, and had, you know, some of the great uh, musicians, Buddy Miles and Billy Cox. Um, it's mind blowing. It's Jimi Hendrix at his finest. Uh, one of my favourite tracks of all time, Machine Gun, is on this. And again, what we were discussing earlier, you really do get the true drama and the true genius of, of mm. Hendrix and his guitar playing. In short, invaluable. Nice. Oh, well, it's a favourite uh, of yours. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, all right. <laughs> it's, it's on, right. Okay. Uh, we're now entering the realms of celestial brilliance here. This is the Allman Brothers live at the Fillmore East about a year or so, a year and a half before Dwayne tragically passed away. To me, it's if you like rock music or even if you like music in general, mm. this is an essential album. Um, the live, we were talking about extended versions of studio tracks. So what you have is the live version of Whipping Post and also um, in the beauty that is in the memory of Elizabeth Reed are so wonderfully put together and the 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 master master interplay between uh Dwayne and Dickie Betts and uh Greg Greg Allman's uh, unbelievable voice not forgetting all the others as well um Jay Johansson and uh uh Butch Trucks on the drums and of course the great Barry Oakley this is a an essential album, live or otherwise, it is total genius. Ah. Here it is, in its, all its glory. I would imagine, Neve, that anybody that likes rock music, mm. whether they're your age or mine, has to like Led Zeppelin. Everyone has to have a Led Zeppelin album in their a, collection. A, at least the Led Zeppelin album in their collection. And the song remains the same as a great live album, but I kind of like this one. This was made in 1972, um, and it was uh, a gig of theirs in, in California. And it's literally the, uh, the band at the top of their game. And it draws so much brilliance uh, that this again to me is an essential item as i suppose all the others are but it, they, this is just a wonderful 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 album 
I recommend this to everyone. If you like Led Zeppelin, and I'm sure because you listen to Neve's channel that you do, this album is the one to get if you like the live experience of theirs. Ooh. Here we go. Some country music. Yes, this is where Neve and myself slightly differ. Uh, whereas she has no particular liking of country rock, I, on the other hand, adore it. And no, none more so uh, than the new Riders of the Purple Sage. And if any of you deadheads are out there, you'll know exactly who I mean. Um, this album has got some great stuff on it. It's got the great Henry. It's got um, Kick in the Head. There's a cover, which is, I still think is the best cover version of Dev Flowers by the Rolling Stones. And the combination of John Marmaduke Dawson's beautiful voice, uh, who with Buddy Cage, who's now tragically also not long, uh, not with us, is fantastic. Uh, and I think as a country album or a country rock album, this is one of my favourites. Home, Home on the Road, The New Riders of the Purple Sage. This is one of my favourite oh, live albums. Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when you were a young prog fan growing up in the late 60s, particularly early 70s, we in this country had the real, real fortunate um, happening but all at the same time, you had wonderful, wonderful prog bands. Mm. And um, this album, Yes Songs, is probably the best live prog album I've heard, other than possibly Emerson, Lake and Palmer. But this has got everything on it. Starship Trooper, Yours Is No Disgrace. Uh, I think it's uh, also got, uh, yeah, it's got close to the edge on this. This is... The wonderful, wonderful, this is a yes, good, good pressing, as and well. it's a great pressing. It's a Japanese pressing, but the music here, the musicianship, Steve Howe, and again, I've talked earlier about John Anderson's, but Rick Wakeman, and I think Bill Bruford's a drummer on this, isn't he? Um, I don't actually. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't it, think it I was, think it was the Alan other. White. Yeah. Was it? I think it could have been Alan White, but still, the absolutely brilliant album, and again epitomised what the prog experience was in this country in the early 70s. Here we go. Mm. <laughs> this album hasn't got a title on it. And the reason why is it doesn't need a title. It is a triple album by possibly my favourite band of all time, The Grateful Dead. And it has a massive, massive sentimental value to me. Not only is it a wonderful album with the band at their peak, but also part of that album was at a concert that I attended to in 1972 at the then Empire Pool Wembley. Mm -hmm. um, so... There's so much good stuff on this. The Grateful Dead are, to me, the epitome of jam bands. And, of course, I love jam music. And they are the perfect example of playing their music and extending it. I mean, Jerry's now not, not long with us. Uh, not long. He's not with us anymore. And you've got all the other guys. You know, Pig Pen's last album before he passed away. And it's just wonderful. Tennessee Jed, Trucking, oh, got Sugar Mac. The live verse in Sugar Magnolia is wonderful. In, sh in short, this is such a good album. But again, for me, this is when I saw them in April 72. The Grateful Dead, Europe 72, fantastic. This one, I think a lot of people have now started listening to this band because of uh, my previous video with you. Yeah. about the prog albums so so as we go down the line uh when we talk about live albums uh we're now sort of entering now the the, the 90s is in this case and the sort of 2000 i don't think 
you could possibly like the Grateful Dead as I do, mm. or as well we both do, and like prog music without really liking Fish, mm -hmm. right? Fish to me are one of my favourite bands now. Um, I, I, I should have listened to them years ago. Um, they hardly ever come to England, which is such a tragedy. I'm speaking selfishly, uh, selfishly, um, because um, th they're sort of very much under the radar. They are, like the dead, and like all the others, incredible live. The show's are live. I mean, they play at Madison, uh, Madison Square Garden. They sell out seven nights. Um, and they're just wonderful. And this album, amongst the other live albums they've done, is my favourite. Uh, not least because it has the wonderful track Simple, which isn't on, I don't believe is on a studio album of theirs, mm. but Trey Anastasio's opening on Simple is just incredible. But it's got great uh, bouncing around the room, tweezer, uh, it's just got everything. Chalk Dust Torture, which I just love. And it's basically Trey Anastasio, um, Mike, uh, Mike uh, Gordon, uh, John Fishman, and also Paige McConnell at their best. They're, this is a wonderful album, and one for people to get into. If they're starting to listen, listen to Fish, they should also try and get in on the Fish live experience. And the actual atmosphere is fantastic on this. So Fish, a live one, get it. Some more fun truth. Oh yes. Now, this is where actually Neve actually likes Johnny Cash. I do, right? I really do. Um, and I think because his brilliance was that he, he transcends all types of music. I love Folsom Prison. It's a great album and possibly, in a way, sometimes could be better than this one. But mm. this one is the one I like and, you know, we're doing this thing because it's personal to me. This, the San Quentin, live at San Quentin Jail, it had, it, the music is just absolutely f incredible. Um, but also, you really get the feeling of the audience mm. in this. And, and of course, when he sings the San Quentin song and he comes out, San Quentin, I hate every inch of you. Mm. And then all the crowd, which are basically prisoners, going ballistic. It is a fabulous, fabulous live album by the man in black. Again, get it. Johnny Cash, live at St. Quentin Jail. Ooh. Blue Reed. 1974. I was in a band and we used to come back after a gig and listen to this album. To this day, I still love it. Mm. It is, to me, my favourite Lou Reed album. Again, the, the atmosphere, you can feel the tension in the audience. It's got everything. Heroin, it's got, um, you know, what else? It's got Sweet Jane, White Light, White Heat, and the wonderful rock and roll, which is his rock and roll at the end. Uh, and two, and this is with two amazing guitarists, uh, Steve Hunter and Dick Wagner, both unbelievable guitarists and this it's so close to perfection this album it's just wonderful and it's Lou Reed as its absolute finest aha ha, ha. Todd Rundgren's Utopia live at the Fox where's the Fox the Fox is a, 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 I think it's in somewhere like Carolina. I can't remember where. Maybe it, one of you could tell us where maybe that Maybe you could tell us, but <laughs> this is, uh, I'm sure it's somewhere. It's somewhere uh, in the US. Somewhere in the south, southern part of the state. But this, anyhow, we're digressing. This is uh, Todd Rundgren's Utopia Live at the Fox. Uh, American prog at its finest. Uh, I think that Todd Rundgren, to me, is a musical master 
you know, he is just so inventive. He is so comfortable in uh, all facets of, of music, whether it's soul, whether it's prog, as in this, or whether it's, you know, just basically electronic music. But this album is it's just prog, and it's got some great stuff on it. The Last Ride, it's got Black Mariah, and the wonderful Utopia theme, which is just amazing. His guitar playing, I love Todd's voice. Mm. Todd's voice is just incredible. But Moogie Klingman, and, and you know, you've got um, Roger Wilcox and other guys who are in the Utopia band. They're wonderful. It, this is just a... Just a great album. So this is Todd Rundgren's Utopia Live at the Fox. Brilliant. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, this is it. Um, the ultimate, with yes songs, to the ultimate what you would call early 70s British prog at its very finest. Emerson, Definitely. Lake and Barnum. You're not going to find too much disagreement here with myself and uh, Neve. This is fantastic. It's um, got a great atmosphere. Three guys at the top of their game. And it's got some great songs on there. Tarkus again, which, you know, in the earlier uh, video I did with Neve is one of my favourite albums. There's stuff there, Tarkus, Take a Pebble. Uh, it's the, and, um, one of my favourites, Jeremy Bender. Mm -hmm. But this is a good thing. And the atmosphere on this album is fantastic. This is Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Welcome to the show. For a recent discovery? Yep. So, this is Coma Divini by Porcupine Tree. This uh, came uh, in the back part of the 90s. And Stephen Wilson... Um, basically producing his first live album. This is just fantastic. It really is. All the musicians on here, all the musicians are just wonderful. And you can hear the, recorded in, in Rome, you could hear the atmosphere the crowd. and the crowd and everything. I mean, as I said to you earlier, um, Porcupine Tree came late again to me, but uh, they really do hold the mantle of great music coming out of the UK in an otherwise in a, in, a, in an in another in an otherwise desert this is a wonderful 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 album get it gonna end strong here yeah you thought that this was going to escape you were wrong uh, Neve, it's upside down oh, sorry <laughs> <laughs> Neve said to me um, what's your favourite live album of all time? Yeah? And I said, you know, like, I've got several great live. I can't really say it. But if you actually told me to account, and I had to come up with it, I would say this. Live Dead, 1969. Uh, Tom Constantin was the main keyboards player. I think at the time, Pigpen uh, was just harmonica and... Uh, and uh, singing, Tom Constantine. Uh, Con Tom Constantine should have stayed still with the Dead. He was one of their best keyboards players, uh, and this album is just wonderful. It is so incredible. There's so much stuff, you know. Um, Death don't have no mercy, which is wonderful. Since Stephen the Eleven, and the greatness. Oh yes, the greatness that is Dark Star. Dark Star. Named your business after it. At one stage, yeah. Dark Star to me is the greatest piece of live music on this album. It's one of them, certainly, I've heard. To me, if you like the music that Neve and I like, um, this is such an essential record. And it is to me the Dead's best lineup because I think Mickey Hart was in the band then and then he left in the early 70s but mm -hmm. i can i can listen to this for, for, for years and years if i said get it i mean it get it it is wonderful you will enjoy it it's fantastic live dead 1969 okay so that's
that is the end of the video today. I uh, hope you all enjoyed that. Did you enjoy that? I enjoyed it a lot, uh, honey, and it was really good. So, just going through those albums, sort of the m memories of gigs that I've been to and everything, come sort of like come flooding back. But you know, it's it, I really did, and you know, there's some great stuff there. Yeah, there were some good albums in there. Maybe some that I wouldn't have put in my personal top ten, <laughs> um, but a lot of them I do agree with. So if everyone liked this video and want to see more dad videos, let us know again. Uh, yeah. I think someone actually asked to see our entire Grateful Dead collection in the previous video. Mm. So I mentioned that I have the record boxes, actually. We got a load of them down here as well. And I can show you now. We have a lot of box sets. All of these albums are all purely Grateful Dead ones, right? Correct. So maybe one day you could talk about some of these albums, some of these boxes. And yeah, that'd be, that'd be quite fun. If you have any ideas, then leave a comment and I'll get back to you most likely. Uh, thanks again and we'll see you soon. See you later. Bye-bye.